Welcome back to another exciting episode of Aaron's Opinion, the podcast for blind people where we talk about critical issues in the blindness community. I'm Aaron Richmond. Tonight, like all other episodes, is copywritten by me, Aaron Richmond, and Aaron's Opinion. Thank you. You can listen to Aaron's Opinion right here on YouTube if you want, along with iTunes or many other places to which you would get a podcast. By the way, consider following my page right here on Facebook. Even consider following on Twitter. Even consider commenting below right here on YouTube. Or consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. We would appreciate the support. Telephone number to get in touch if you want to leave a nasty voicemail or a nice one. Or if you have questions, text. you could text or call one 681 9869 Aaron's Opinion 6 at gmail.com. Um, and you know, it's really important out there in the community to post, um, to post things that we do. And as a matter of fact, Chris York joins us this evening. Um, he is a, a musician, um, blind musician, um, and he has a very interesting story. So I want to take this time to say welcome to Aaron's opinion. Um, why don't we start with your journey um, to becoming, you know, journey into blindness. Let's, let's start there and kind of walk forwards until we get into the music. So go right ahead. You're on. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for allowing me to join you on your podcast. And My pleasure. My pleasure. And know that, know that every, know that this is the podcast that is the most welcoming one. So everyone's welcome here. Well, I, I really appreciate it. Well, I was born with Peter's anomaly. I, I saw up until I was 14, Peter's anomaly is not what took my sight. What took my sight was I was at a camp and uh, the nurse that was giving me medication was, but, but I, I'm, I'm guessing didn't have her hands washed or something and I had just had surgery and I caught strep of the eye. And it caused me to get, to have a uh, corneal, I mean, it caused me to have a uh, retinal detachment in, in, in my left eye. And, and I didn't have sight in my, uh, my other eye. So uh, I went totally blind from around 14 to 15 years old. As a matter of fact, I have Peter's anomaly too. Really? Um, the condition now is known as Kabuki syndrome. Yes, welcome. Um, well, that is that is a very that is truly concerning that a nurse would not uh, sanitize properly. Alrighty. Well, I've heard everything from you know guys, and this really illustrates how there are many ways that people can lose their vision. As you know, I I was born blind, so I never had to make that transition in life, but. Um, I mean, we've got everything on this podcast. My last guest uh, lost their vision from an armed robbery. And they were an armed robbery victim. Um, and then I've had people who've been hit over the head by a brick. I've gotten uh, shoot, uh, shooting your eye out, thumbtack in the eye, um, accidents, you know, very, very, there can be a lot of ways that someone can lose their vision. But that is, that is highly inappropriate and totally, totally unforgivable. Um, for a nurse to, to act like that, in my opinion. Um, so, and how old were you when this happened? It sounds, uh, like you, it sounds like you were younger because you needed the nurse to give you the eye drops. Yeah, well, what had happened, well, I, you know, uh, with Peter's anomaly, you have many uh, 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 corneal rejections. Indeed. And, you know, so I had, uh, I had just had a corneal transplant like that a couple of weeks prior and I had just been um given the okay it was a summer camp I was uh, maybe 11 12 years old and so this 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 whole ordeal actually took place around maybe three years or so like it it, it didn't just like happen overnight it kind of like slowly happened but wh what took what she did uh I had certain um, eye drops, that I, I, that, but I would take at certain times, and 
I, I knew my schedule and that she would, you know, she was wanting to argue with me and I was telling her, you know, I know that one. I, I know that I shouldn't have it at this moment and I'm not sure if that would affect my surgeries or whatnot. And, you know, she, she more or less kind of touched my eye in that way fighting with me. So it's like if she wouldn't have been fighting with me, then, you know, the whole situation would never even happen. Huh. That is interesting and concerning. Um, okay, well, so from there, you know, what did you, what, what did you do? Can you tell us in more detail about the transition that you then needed to make? So go right ahead. Okay, well, thank God to my mother, uh, because she, you know, she always told me, she said, your eyesight is not guaranteed. She said, you know, it, it wasn't guaranteed that you were going to be able to see past the age of two and you have seen and so she had always prepared me for that point in life where if I went blind. And so I was a kid that I, I really fought it. I am like, I don't want braille. I'd rather not do this. Uh, I, I, I can read large print, leave me alone. I don't want to use the canes, et cetera. And, you know, but my mom like fought really long and hard. And even... It, it, you know, even though I don't always use some of the, the normal things that people would use, I'm very thankful that she did because that's what really more or less set me up in life to be able to go on to do the things that I have done, such as like uh, my wife and I, we call my, I, I used to live in um South Carolina full-time and my wife and I decided we were going to move with our two kids and we went to Puerto Rico and so we we moved to Puerto Rico we started a nonprofit in Puerto Rico you know so there's a lot of things that I, I feel like if my mother pushed me to do things and to get to certain places that I wouldn't be doing like music and pushing my way through life when people would tell me that I can't because I think my biggest thing was not that I couldn't do it, but what people perceived that I could do. You're absolutely right. You know, just just to, to clarify, so I can understand, every, you know, all this information. So, are are you now this nonprofit that you set up then? Is it um, still in in service uh, to you know to you know now to, to you know now today? It is. We haven't been able to do much with it at this moment because uh, there's been a lot of regulations. What happened, <clears throat> my wife and I decided we wanted to have something different. So we did move to Puerto Rico. Never seen the island in a day in our lives. We just said, yeah, well, let's just go do it. <laughs> so we just picked up and did it. And um, we were there through Maria. I, had, I, I was the play, crazy blind guy that uh, was sticking my phone out the window and getting the, the video during the hurricane. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I, after this, my um, wife and I realized that there was a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of uh, issues with keep, um, uh, transportation because of the roads and the flooding and everything that even though there was supplies people didn't have food and the area that we were in when Maria hit in September the first set of food that actually hit the area was almost in, in, the, um, in, in, in the end of November it was right after Thanksgiving when when uh, when they actually finally got to that area in Puerto Rico. And so me and my wife and were like, what if we figured out a way to have uh, gardens where you could, uh, um, you know, teach the people to store the food and the food would be accessible to people that needed it on hand, but a portion would be put back in areas in the community that that way, if a situation like this would happen again, that, you know, there, there would be something to fall back on. 
Right. Sure. Sure. Okay. So even though there's a lot of bureaucracy, um, right. What what what, what can the that would hold it? Right. 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 Sure. Sure. So if someone wants to like learn about this nonprofit, like what you know, what is it called, and like what is what what is the website? My little community gardens, Puerto Rico. Um, I have not had the means to really get a website set up. I would love if you know anybody that wouldn't mind helping us. Um, it's just been me and my wife connecting. Right, because we, we have people. So the reason I'm asking so many questions is that one of the things that I love to do as a blind person as a successful blind person, but then as a podcaster in the community is to help other blind people, you know, who are in the business world, who, who are deserving of help. And I'm finding that a lot of blind people have excellent ideas and the greatest of intentions, but simply need a YouTuber like me, like Aaron's opinion to maybe promote their nonprofit or their business, and then maybe get some, you know, traffic, some, you know, some action. Um, so that, you know, you could, you know, you could, you know, make that dream come true. And so that really the next time something like that does happen in Puerto Rico, um, there is food. I mean, that, that, that would be critical. I mean, if Aaron's a pit, I mean, if, if my podcast can, if I can know that I was able to provide food, I mean, that's, that's really quite inspirational, I think. Yeah. Well, it's been a different journey now due to the the, the regulations of COVID-19. Right. I actually, we have sat back because I'm like, it, the, here, I don't, I, I don't know how it is where you are, but here every, like every two weeks, the laws change. And so it's like trying to keep up with it is, and, 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 and in Spanish. <laughs> right, right. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. And, and yes, and yes, I can read Spanish and I understand Spanish relatively decently now but it's still not my first language my daughter is amazing right 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 okay well so <laughs> still um if someone wants to help your nonprofit or get in touch with you how would they do that i uh, um you can there i think there uh i'm i would have to ask my um my, my wife when i can get back here, here I okay here, yeah, yeah, I tell yeah, I tell you guys. Problem. Here, guys, I, I, I would be great, grateful, honestly, but I cannot tell you off the top of my head with that. Right, because okay, so so I t so I tell you what, guys. So uh, so off the air, what we're gonna do is we're gonna at some point, if you want, you can try to try to figure that out, try to track down the link, um, and then we can talk about that off the air. But yeah, there's <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something that can be done to 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 help to to help out with that, and there's got to be a way for you to um, you know, you know, promote, you know, promote what you do, you know, if you're going to, you know, provide food or provide things to people in need, you know, that's, that's, oh, that's always the right thing. So that's, that's so good. Now, um, okay, well, this is actually very interesting for me. So are you now, are you living, um, on Puerto Rico now? Yes, I'm, I'm actually in Puerto Rico as we speak. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. I don't think I have ever interviewed anyone from Puerto Rico before. It's very interesting. So um, from a blindness perspective, what can you tell me about, you know, Puerto Rico and, you know, and, and living there? Well, I feel like any mobility teacher that ever needed license should have had to take their, uh, their, their uh, um, mobility training in Puerto Rico. That's what I think. Because the the most amazing things you'll find in Puerto Rico holes, just in the most craziest places, signs that went down that you would never imagine would be there, cars that just park in the middle of the road or on the side of the street or or, or just like directly turned sideways on the across the the you know a sidewalk uh uh. Just it, it, the whole the whole layout of Puerto Rico is almost if you can imagine um, the wild wild west. Okay. To me, it is. It, but it's but it's a, a very beautiful place. I I I I, I love it. But, but there are things that frustrate me. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's. Well, that's <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Well, I, I think that is how, um, quite frankly, a lot of the world is like that outside of the outside of the fifty states. You know, I think that's how a lot of it is. It, it, it really is. It, it, it is. But I, I, I just take. I told, I was telling my wife, I said, man, if, the, if, if my mobility teacher just, you know, prepared me for some of these things, um, not to this extent. Right. right. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. The water well, hole might be covered one day and, co and not the next day, you know? Right. All right. All right. <laughs> so how are you? Um, well, that's, it's very <laughs> interesting. Um, I, that is fine. That is fine. 100% free. 11 point Apple system you like. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Hey. There we go. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of traveling overseas all over the world and it, it is very interesting to see how the conditions are and how the services are. Yes. Um, outside of the continent, outside of the United States, and by United States, actually, you are in the United States by definition. But I mean, but, but, outside of the but, 50. But, but they don't believe that we are. So many people don't believe we are. That's yeah. I was going to ask about that. So in in I mean, when you're walking around in, in in Puerto Rico, does it feel like the United States, or does it just feel like kind of like a combination of Spain and the Caribbean? It's like Spain, Caribbean, and the United States. It's like a. It has a United States feel because of some of the same services and things that they offer. Mm -hmm. But it's all made, it, none of the houses look the same. It's very Spain, Spanish, and it's mm -hmm. and the wet and the weather is totally different. Um, well, let's well let's okay. So for, so first of all, let's let's complain about the weather. So how would you describe the weather in Spain? Is it kind of tropical the whole year, or how, how is the weather? It's better than Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's way better than Florida. Um, my kids cry when it gets sound below seventy-five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say it's cold, and they pull out big blankets. I said, "Guys, y'all been here so long, you could never go back home." That that is that is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. Yeah, my in my state, um, you're lucky. For a part of the year, it's because it's a couple of days where you get so cold you can't even go outside, and then other parts of the year it's too hot. So it's it's a lot of either too hot or too cold, and then you have some some temperatures in the middle. It doesn't mm -hmm. get too hot either. That's the most beautiful thing about it. Okay, when it gets hot like that year there, okay, the the the, the humidity at times maybe one or two months out of the year can get rough but it i have never seen it over um 99 100 degrees mm -hmm. and i've never seen it below 68 degrees wow. and i'm here for going on five six years i i see i see all right all right it's, well it's, it's beautiful well cool cool now um and and are you are you guys like living in like San Juan or like one of the other towns? Uh, by the oh, way, San Juan is the only I, town I've heard. I live in San Juan now. I I don't live far from where the 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 ship stock. I'm maybe like ten fifteen minutes from there. In the, like, mm -hmm. um, I used to live in one of the poorer areas, places that some Puerto Ricans were scared to go. But I, I actually I found that that those people are like very beautiful people. Um, I lived in a place called Luisa, and that's where I was telling you, you know, I was, you know, watching this situation happen. Um, it was actually directly on the coast. Mm -hmm. And so they got it, but they never got help. That, that didn't take that, that long. So, so, so I've, I've lived in multiple places in Puerto Rico, but at this moment, I live in uh, San Juan. I see. I see. Cool. Cool, man. So like is San Juan, um, I mean, it's kind of a silly question, but is it like mm, from an American perspective, from a United States, 50 states perspective, is it like a big town or is it like, like a city, like with like mm -hmm. Bustle City or is it just a big town? Hmm. You're in Maryland, right? Uh, you, you uh, it's uh, it, uh, on this spot. My my location is is undisclosed. Okay, 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 okay I got you. Okay, 
Yeah. Um, um, sorry. No um, problem. You didn't, you didn't know. No problem. Um, uh, just trying to think. Say, I, I would say small town. Um, like like a, a, a medium-sized town. It, 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 even though it has large things, like it has like the big Walmarts and stuff, and it has like traffic, it's really not that large comparison. The island itself, you can drive all the way around the island and back in seven to eight hours. Mm, mm-hmm. So it's really not that big. I want to say it's like a uh, hundred and... 30 across and like 50 to 60 the other way. Huh. huh. That gives you an idea. I see. I see. Well, this is, this brings me to my next question. Have you done a lot of sailing and have you sailed to the many other countries and islands that are around you? No, but it sounds like a lot of fun. I've actually... (laughs) I, I, I well, I was I was kind of hoping, as you could tell, I was kind of hoping that you had done it so that we could talk about it. No, so, <laughs> I asked my wife, I said, after we did this, I told her, I said, man, I said, we should start a YouTube channel, um, 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 visually impaired and traveling the world on a budget. <laughs> because like, well, you well, know, I, yeah, well, no you know, I would, I would love. <laughs> I would love I would love to support that channel. You guys can you guys can you know, I'm not I'm not kidding. If you if that's your dream to support a you to start a YouTube channel, come on over to this podcast, talk about it and then start it up and we'll put a link in the description to that if that's what you guys want to do. I'll I'll gladly help you pr- promote your channel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yes. If you want to have if you want like since you have some site if you want pictures of like how it really looks in Puerto Rico and stuff. I can send you that. That's all right. That's quite all right. I don't need I don't need pictures. I was more interested to hear your perspective. That's what makes this an interesting um, well, episode. I, 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 Puerto Rico itself is very interesting. So it just depends on which it depends on if you want to be Puerto Rican or if you want to be American I think. R- right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see. I see. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so how are you? How are you uh, spending your time now? Um, a lot, actually. I went. Um, that 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 brings me to Brian musically. I during the COVID era, I decided there was a lot of uh, um, job opportunity for uh, electronic musicians. Mm-hmm. And I've always uh, done music, and you know, and I, uh, I was like, I told my wife, I said, I got to figure out something I can support my family. And I said, it's something I enjoy doing, so I decided to go back to school. And the first school would not accept me. Um, they actually told me that uh, if I were to reapply. I would I would have to get a GD. They would not accept the diploma that I had, and if I had if I were to reapply, that I would have to uh, I would be required to take certain classes from an IC music course, in which they would not apply as um, college credits, but they would uh, they would recommend they were they were asking for them as prerequisites for me to go to school. And so I told him, I said, you know, this, that's uh, you know, discrimination. I, I just finished closing that aunt, but I really did not get any justice with OCR. So, but I mean, and it, and it really blew my mind because the, the, the letter states that they would recommend it as a uh, prerequisite. And prerequisite means something that you have to do. Like, it's not we're, we're recommending that you take it. That they're saying that if I have to apply, that they, that I have to do this, and, and you know, and the and the the OCR comes back and they say, uh, well, they understand that they can't say that, so because they understand that they can't say that, we're not going to do anything. And I'm like, but they actually said it, so like, what is? Mm-hmm. 
you know, and they're like, I mean, that's like me saying, oh, I, well, I know I shouldn't have stole it. Oh, but you're going to let me keep the TV and you're going to tell me, okay, well, just don't do it again. You know, I'm like, what? That doesn't make sense. No logical sense. But yeah, I did enroll and um, surprisingly, their sister school, um, uh, Los Angeles Film School. And uh, at that moment, as we speak now, I'm holding a 4.0 GPA with them. And they're asking me to uh, um, accept being inducted in the uh, Honor Society of Performing Arts. So. Well, congr well, there you go. Congratulations for that. And that's really what you have to do. You have to spend time figuring out, you know, what works and only put forth your energy to those who are willing to support you. And this is a critical, I think, life lesson, certainly in the, in the blindness community and, and, all, and really in life. So that is, that is so good. Well, um, so what is your, what is your dream really as, you know, your future plans as, as a musician? My, my dream, my entire full dream, is to take this platform, bring awareness. I want to bring back better music. Music has gotten so shockingly out there. And I have daughters. I have a son growing up. And music is a very powerful tool. And it is a tool that is used to control the masses. And, I, and they're using it to control the masses. And they are... Uh, demoralizing our children with it, and I and, and I, I want to put I want to put music that is just as good that has has moralization and even you know all the way down to the man and woman uh, situations, and then I want to take that money and I want to put it in that I get to into an organization to stop um, child trafficking. I don't really care to be famous. It's not something I really desire to do. It's just something that if I got the chance, that's what I would do with it. Mm. Well, anything that, that protects people and protects the rights that children have, that's absolutely correct. That's the right thing for you to do. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see if we can, you know, get to the, get to the bottom of this nonprofit, see if you, if we can figure out what this nonprofit is that you have. Yeah. And you can use this all in one. And that, that's what people don't realize. Okay. You can have a, well, there is a parent um, nonprofit and it more or less, it, it holds up subsidiary or nonprofits. Okay. If I had a nonprofit that fed, fed people, then I have something that I can use that if we were working with uh, not um, 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 traffic children, that I wouldn't have to worry about where the food would come from. So it would be sustainable within that aspect, and I don't have to ask for money in that aspect. So when you put it together, you bring them under subsidiary reign, and that would allow you to be able to fundraise for all of your nonprofits under the nonprofit. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think you're on to something. I think you are certainly on to something there. Um, do you want to share with me any of your music? Do you have any instruments with you right now that you would want to play for me? Let me see. I don't know if you can hear. I was actually debating that. How do I do that? I have had this. Google Chrome. Mail. 17,031. Finder. Zoom.us. Google Chrome. Mail. 17,000. Mail. 20 mailboxes selected. Spotlight. Spotlight. System dialogue. Spotlight search. Search text. Be flat. Zoom.us. Logic Chrome app. Application. Mail. 20 mailboxes selected. 23. I don't know how well it's going to come through. Aaron Richmond is in box. Logic Pro. Image. You are currently on it. One second. You have to let me know if you hear it. Bitch. Close. Button. Abstract atmosphere. Web output. You are currently on the cell three items. Inside of a table. To navigate the cell within this table, press control. Option. Two, two. Tracks. Window. Oh. Group. Menu bar. Apple. Logic. File. Five. New commit. New from template. Open. Ellipsis. Open. Recents. Close. Tim. Open. Recent. Open. Discord. Radio. Logic. Radio. Two. Logic. Sunrise. Dot. Logics. Okay. Sunrise. Dot. Logic. Chicks. I 
call this uh, Arabian sunrise. Is it hearable? Can you can you hear? I I heard it for a second. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure you can hear. Okay. Here we go. One four 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 Um, I have words coming out on, on my uh, YouTube channel to that real soon. I like that. It was really interesting. Um, you know, I really like the way you use the electronics to really, really paint. It's really good music for YouTube, really good mood music, really good soundtrack, really good environmental kind of that type of vibe. Great for vlogs. I mean, I definitely get it. I definitely see that that's really, really good. Okay, you know, we've covered a lot in this episode already. Um, so are, are you on YouTube? I am. Uh, you can look me up, Chris York Music. Uh, oh. uh, you can find me there. I can send you the links. And you can subscribe on Facebook also. You can look me up, Chris York Music. Oh. Well, very good. Okay. Okay. Well, then I think, I think that is at, at very least, that's where I will start. So I'm going to start by, by promoting, how about I start by promoting Chris York music, such as clicking on the uh, link in the description for more information. Let's, let's yeah. start there and then we can work out the other stuff, but I'll, that'll, de that'll definitely help you to get your, your music, um, your awesome. bi music business going. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, and so now we've come to this part of the show that I really tend, tend to enjoy. Um, yeah, I tend to enjoy this particular part of the show. Just before I close and thank a guest, I always like to say, well, for one thing, um, Chris, thank you for joining me. For another, if you can only ask me one question, one question only, what do you want to ask? When did you decide that you wanted to be a podcast, uh, 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 a podcast uh, 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 leader or, or host? There we go, host. That's the word. 
You know, I was listening to a lot of podcasts uh, for the blindness community. I'm not going to name drop, but you probably have listened to many of them too. Um, and I do. I was just getting very, very frust frustrated because these podcasts were just not not approachable. And I had already been teaching English online for five years, and I felt that you know, <clears throat> um, I, I really need to get into podcasting. I have a lot of complaints. I love educating people. I love talking. This is just what I want to do. I just want to be. I just want my. I just want my voice to be heard. More importantly than my my voice, I want to use my voice to help one other person. So if we do that, it's a success. And that's why I got into podcasting and created Aaron's Opinion. And of course, over time, it's built up to this YouTube channel and things like that. But um, that is how I, I got into this. Mm -hmm. we, we have very much so the same opinion. Uh, people pushed me to do this for a very long time. It wasn't mm -hmm. that I'm, my wife's like, maybe you have the talent to do it. And it will bring the money to do it. And so I'm like, you know, we'll fine, let's just do it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, we're going to talk in a minute. I'm going to talk to you about how that's going to work off off the air. I'm going to give you some more little 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 snippets of advice, I guess, off the air. But um, do you have any uh, final final words that you want to give my audience this evening in this episode? I do. It doesn't matter how old you get or how many times you failed at something. It don't hurt to try again. Just don't do the same thing that you did when you failed the last time. Hmm. Hmm. It don't hurt to try again. I love that. It don't hurt to try again. That's pretty good. Pretty. That's great. That's great. Um, well, Chris, I wish you the very best of health. I wish your family the very best of health. Insane. I wish the world, the world very good health. We have a very special way that we like to end every episode of Aaron's Opinion. But don't forget, comment below right here on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook at Aaron's Opinion. You could also send a message there. You can also send me an email, Aaron's Opinion 6 at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter. Comment below and consider becoming a patron on my Patreon, okay? Telephone number 1240-681-9869. Text or call to, to contribute to the show or to ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Have you listened to, to any of my other episodes to know how I end every episode? I have watched one of your episodes earlier. I have had so much going on with dealing with four kids and doing, trying to push this. I, 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 I sat down and I watched it, the one with the guy from the Philippines. So do you, do you know, do you want to say how we end these episodes? This is a very special saying we have here at Aaron's Opinion. Or do you want me to say it? I know what you say. I see, I see. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Help one person today. Help a million people tomorrow. <laughs>